because I was hanging out in Coffee Connection and I was just like, oh, I'm gonna go into this room for a bit and look what I found. So cool, right? This is where they film big church. We should totally film kids church in here. All right, gonna go find Mr. Josh and Ron. Hey, hey guys, what you doing? Studying the word. Amazing. Uh, just where I thought I'd find you, but I found the coolest thing. I was just like hanging out in Coffee Connection and I noticed that the room to where they film big church is open. Are you guys thinking what I'm thinking? Absolutely. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I think I'm thinking what you're thinking. Are you thinking what Megan's thinking, what I'm thinking, what you're thinking, what I'm thinking? I think that we're all thinking the same things. Yes! Kids Church, church Takeover! Our history is about one of those times, but 
before we get to it, it's time to sing! Oh yeah! Hey you guys, we're at the big church worship team setup. It's always so fun to sing and worship God with all of you. Now, we're not actually going to sing and play instruments. <laughs> at least on camera. But it is the kids' church takeover. So we need to take over the worship team area too. Woo! Yeah! We get to shine God's light everywhere we go, each and every day. We can share his love with the things we do and, and the things that we say. Sing this with us. You can make your own motions or, or just sing the words, but we want you to get up off that couch and praise God with us. So get up and let's do it. I just 
Lesson in here. Yeah! In Brad's chair? Yeah. In the chair. The chair. The chair. The chair. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. How does it feel? The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now, here's a retelling of an amazing lesson taught by Jesus, found in Matthew chapter 5. Are we recording? Yes. Okay, okay. I don't know what to do with my hands. Whatever you, whatever you need. But like, does Brad, does, does he sit this way or this way? Just what do I, what, what, how do, what do I do? Josh. What? Just be yourself. Myself? Yeah. No, it was you. Okay. <clears throat> when Jesus was on the earth, crowds gathered wherever he went. They wanted to hear his wise words, and they had heard about his amazing miracles, too. One particular day, Jesus saw a crowd gathering. He took his disciples up a mountainside and began to teach them. He explained how we can live out God's love here on earth when we show his love to others. Matthew was one of his disciples who was there that day. He wrote down the words that Jesus spoke, and we can read them right here in the Bible, in the book of Matthew, read by Matthew. Hi, this is Matthew. I'm going to be reading the scripture for today. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but suppose the salt loses its saltiness. How can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything. It will be thrown out. People will walk all over it. Awesome, Matthew! And I heard, you just turned eight. Happy birthday, dude. Let's see what else Jesus had to say. And here's Nicholas to pick up in verse 14. What's up, everybody? I'm Nicholas, and I miss you guys. You guys gotta come up to the pop-up pantry with me. And I'm gonna read Matthew chapter five, verses 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill can't be hidden. Also, people do not light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand. Then it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine in front of, the, in front of others. Then they will see 
the good things you do, and they will praise your Father who is in heaven. Everybody, let's shine our lights. Shine our lights! Thanks, Matthew and Nicholas. Now let's figure out what Jesus meant by that. Now what did he say in the first part? You are the salt of the earth. Salt is important for lots of things. It definitely makes popcorn better. It even gives our desserts that perfect salty sweet flavor. The right amount of salt is important to keep our bodies working properly. And back in the time when Jesus said these words, salt was especially valuable. People used it for lots of different things, like keeping their food fresh because there weren't any refrigerators. But if salt ever wasn't salty, then what would it be good for? Jesus was saying that God made us with a very important purpose, just like salt. He created us to make things better for the people around us. Now what else did Jesus say? You are the light of the world. Now light is so important Obviously, it helps us see where we're going. Guides us when we need to know the way. Just like a lighthouse keeps sailors safe on the ocean. Light also reminds us that we can have hope even when everything around us seems dark and scary. When we believe in Jesus, his light shines in us. It's like we're a city on a hill, shining light for everyone to see. We can shine by doing good things for people around us. Jesus said we shouldn't hide our light. Instead, we should let it shine bright. So here's a question for you. Why is it so important for us to be like salt and light? Let's go back to what Jesus said. In the same way, let your light shine in front of others. Then they will see the good things you do, and they will praise your Father who is in heaven. You see, when we show love to others, we can help them understand how much God loves them. We can bring glory to God when we do good things for other people. Like when we spend time with someone who needs a friend, when we stop what we're doing to help, or when we work together to solve a problem. We don't just do good things so people will see us. When we let our light shine so others can see it, people will see the good things we do and bring glory to God. By using our creativity to help others, we can share God's story and show what God is doing in our lives. When Jesus said that we're like salt, he meant that we can make things better for the people around us. When we share God's story and shine his light, we can bring hope to others. We help fill their lives with kindness, joy, and peace. We can shine our light by loving God and loving other people. Our lives can tell his story in everything we say and do. In fact, God created you to share his story. Your whole life can point others to God's story. Don't just talk about God. Put your words into action. Show what a difference he has made in your life. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Love your neighbor. That's how we can do what God created us to do. Share his story. Let's pray and ask God to help us do that. Father God, thank you so much for your word, for your Bible, for showing us how we can share your story with the people around us. Lord, we pray that this week you would help us show others your light and to be light and salt in the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. What Jesus said to his disciples is also true for you and me. God made us to spread salt and light. He made each of us with an important purpose. God created you to share his story. Say that with me. God created you to share his story. Now say, God created me to share his story. God created me to share his story. That's right. Each one of us can share his story with our actions, not just our words. Maybe you have a gift or talent that God has given you. He's made you creative in your own unique way. Remember, when you use the gifts that God gave you, it honors him and it allows you to share his love with others. That's how you can share his story and help other people know his love too. Maybe you really like to create art. You could make a drawing that reminds others of God and the amazing world he created. Or maybe you know a friend who 
is going through a tough time right now. You could write out one of your favorite Bible verses that always encourages you and give it to that friend. God's story is good news for everyone. And with God's help, we can share it with others. We can tell them about God, but we can also show them. That's what it means to be salt and light. When we're kind to people, we're showing them that God is kind. When we're patient with people, we're showing them that God is patient. And when we love people, we're showing them that God loves them more than they could ever imagine. There are tons of great ways that we can share God's story. We can all use our creativity, but the important part to remember is this. God created you to share his story. It isn't just about the words you say. God made you in his image. That means you can use your creativity to share his story in all kinds of ways. You can share his story with art, music, or even just being a good friend. Whatever gift or talent God gave you, you can use it to share his story with others. You can discuss that more with your parents or friends today. We will see you next week. Thanks for helping us take over the big church studio. Yes! <laughs>